Okay, so I'm not an influencer, I'm not one for hype, but this is a phone that if it was sold definitely outside of China with a very similar price, would sell just like hotcakes, would just be absolutely clearing the shelves. And you'll see why in this video, because this thing here is the K30 Ultra. And what it is is basically Xiaomi took the Poco F2 Pro, they downgraded the CPU, but it's not really too much of a downgrade that most people are gonna be worried about. In order to save a lot of money, they did this. They also upgraded the screen. So this screen now no longer is at 60 hertz, it's 120 hertz, it's a flagship level screen, it really is, it's top tier, thousand nit brightness, super AMOLED with no flaws whatsoever, good responsive touch sampling rate, and it really is amazing because it doesn't have a notch, a cutout or anything because we've got a pop-up camera here. So what else did Xiaomi change with this model? So they decided that they'd give it a secondary loudspeaker that a lot of people were asking for with the Poco F2 Pro. And that means we lost, unfortunately, the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. 33 watt charging, we still have a very large battery, which is 4,700 milliamp hours. And for a 120 hertz phone, it surprised me with its battery life. It's also 120 hertz battery life king so far out of the phones I have tested. Excellent build quality, 64 megapixel main camera, 13 megapixel ultra a five megapixel macro that takes excellent super sharp macro photos with so much detail as you see later on from my samples. And overall it is a complete package that you cannot buy out of China. But of course you can import one in, which I did. I bought this model here from Trading Shenzhen. So here is our box, it has some special markings on here that it is Xiaomi's 10th anniversary. So I'll charge it, this one here is 33 watts, okay? And it does take about 55 minutes to fully charge the battery within this, so it's not too bad. We get your standard cable here from Xiaomi, so the white and gray Type-C to USB, of course. And inside this, you'll find our SIM tray tool, and we also have a case for the phone and a little bit of paperwork. And we also get a Type-C to a 3.5 millimeter adapter, which is great. I hope they keep doing this from now on. The Xiaomi Mi 10 Ultra also includes a Type-C adapter. And here's what it looks like in the case. So the case does offer protection for the camera glass on the rear, protection for our buttons and the ports at the bottom. It fits perfectly. It's made out of plastic here at the back, but the edges and the outside is made out of a more durable, and slightly tighter TPU, so it's quite hard to get on and off, but it gives it an absolute perfect fit. And of course there is a cutout for that pop-up selfie camera, which is 20 megapixels, there's a status LED within this. This is an IR blaster, a one of three microphones. So I still have, of course, my K30 Pro Zoom. It's right here, it's very similar to the Poco F2 Pro, and the back of it looks almost the same, identical, except instead of stating right here 64 megapixels, there is now a little hole. That hole houses within it a microphone. So this is our third microphone that gathers sound from your subject. So if you're shooting, for example, people talking in front of you, it will get that audio much better now with the audio zoom modes that it does have as well. Dual tone LED flash. We do have, I believe it's Gorilla Glass 5 here on the back, curved edges, metal frame around the outside, and it does have a metal frame around this part right here of the camera module, the lens over it. So the weight of this phone is about the same as the Poco F2 Pro. Let's have a look at the K30 Pro here. This one is 224 grams. And now let's weigh and check the K30 Ultra, which is actually slightly lighter here at 219. So yes, we unfortunately lost our headphone jack. And what did we gain? Well, it's the loudspeaker and the earpiece, which I'll get onto shortly. So it looks exactly the same here as the Poco F2 Pro, the K30 Pro. The Type-C port here is just USB 2 speeds and it does not support video out at all. The downwards frying loudspeaker SIM tray takes two nano SIMs, and I'll flip it over and show you the top. You can see the difference here. So sadly, my beloved 3.5 millimeter analog audio port is not there, it's gone. So one interesting change is they've actually lowered the fingerprint reader location. You can see here that when you look at them side by side, see there's a bit of a difference how much lower it is on the left here, the left being of course the K30 Ultra. So to unlock, you simply place your thumb there and it's very quick. It's just as fast as the K30 Pro that I have here or the Poco F2 Pro. Placing my thumb there, you see, that's quick. The animation here with MIUI 12 may make it look a little slow. So there is actually another difference here too that's very minimal that most people probably wouldn't even spot. You notice how it's a little more squared off here at the bottom, so compared to the K30 Pro Zoom here, slightly more rounded, 
So you should be able to pick up here at the closer zoom level I've got right now that the minor change here to the edges. Now it is a middle frame that goes all the way around the outside of these Gorilla Glass five covered screens. And that earpiece right at the top, it's now wider because it's doubling as a secondary loudspeaker. So this is a big change that people want, but of course putting it in here means we lost that 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, sadly. Now there is actually a difference. I have noticed detecting a very slight difference that the call quality because of this earpiece being a speaker now, it actually does sound a little bit richer, slightly better to my ears. So we have a fantastic screen in this one, 100 nits, full HD plus, 6.67 inches, and of course it has no notch, there's no cutout, it's a full screen, a lovely, awesome experience with this one. Now because we've gone with the 120 hertz refresh rate now, Xiaomi's done that, it is so much smoother when you're using it, and you do notice this. If I go back to now the K30 Pro, which by the way is always gonna be on the right of the screen, okay? you sometimes you just see that it doesn't feel quite as smooth, those animations, especially when you bring open uh, something and load something up right here, you'll see that, oh, it just doesn't actually feel as smooth the whole time. Now, gestures and the animations at 120 hertz are looking very, very good. However, yes, I have noticed occasionally, and especially because I'm using faster phones also at 120 hertz, for example, the Mi 10 Ultra reviews in the channel, that compared to this model, the 120 hertz, I've noticed it doesn't seem to be quite as smooth. It's as, almost as if Xiaomi's not actually pushing 120 frames per second on this one when you have it set to 120 hertz. I think they're actually running a lower frame rate here. And I do also notice this compared to the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, also in the channel. There's a comparison of both of these ones, by the way. You just happen to see that, that this one, it just feels so smooth, even though it's the Exynos version, it always seems to be running at that 120 hertz. This one, really smooth. Go back and say, yep, yeah, this is smooth like a flagship, but it's just those animations I feel need a little bit of work. So I can also tell you that with this display that when I've been using it, I first went in and jumped in to have a look to see if I could see any problems here with it. So I had a look at the darker images, blacks, everything, and noticed that there's no issues, okay? I'm not seeing any strange banding at low brightnesses. Uh, there is no DC dimming option here in the settings, unfortunately, which is a shame. I'll just quickly show you that under display, our settings. So dark modes there, the refresh rate, it's always going to be on 120 hertz for this review. And you'll notice that where's DC dimming? I hope that Xiaomi can add this, but maybe the hardware is just not actually there. All right, so aside from the occasional little frame dip that I'm seeing, and it's probably something that you will not actually see. So I just wanna make that really clear to people that you'll probably say that I'm ranting. People will probably buy it and put it in the comments, hey Chris, I've got this phone, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. And if you're a PC gamer, you've got a monitor that's 144 hertz, or for example, 120 hertz, or you have a 120 hertz phone screen, then you come over and use this phone, trust me, you're gonna actually see this. But for everyone else out there, they're probably never gonna notice what I'm talking about with the animations just sometimes not being 100%. It irritates me and I know I'm being fussy, I'm nitpicking. So the UI is of course MIUI and we do have the latest update here. Now free space, you get about 120 or so gigabytes with this particular model here. You can see our specs, the Dimensity 1000 Plus here from MediaTek is actually a stunner of a chip for the price. And even the Dimensity 820 is impressive. So large battery size. And when I get onto the specs and my benchmarks and other things, sorry, that I've already tested, you'll see that the battery life is actually fantastic for this particular model. So it is the Chinese model, of course, you can't actually get this globally. So Google Play Store must be installed. But the ROM, this has been there for some time now, the Xiaomi actually include the framework, Google Manager, and many other actually things are already part of the ROM, but what's missing is just simply the Google Play Store. So download the Google Play Store APK file, install it, set the permissions, set auto start, and your applications will be working. Now notifications, they, I've cleared them all, but notifications have been coming through just fine. I did have some issues, but it was down to the permissions of some of the apps, so that's why it wasn't pulling through. So make sure you do set the permissions all up, and as mentioned, the auto start, and then you should have no real issues. Bloatware, there's a lot of Chinese bloat first on this phone that I removed all of that, and you can get rid of about 95% of it.
Now, what about real world use? This is a phone that is very quick overall. It feels just like a flagship phone, all of the flagships I'm testing. Keyboard, haptic feedback is very nice typing. It's a nice strong vibration motor, very easy to type on the keyboard without any typos. Just as I mentioned before, work really great. Now, multitasking, you can do split screen, and the performance swapping between apps is very good. Let's check out Legends. It's been in the background here now for five minutes. And, oh, okay, it has to reload. So this is what's happening. Okay, the task manager with Xiaomi with MIUI 12 seems to be even more aggressive. This could explain why we have very good battery life because it's cutting the background applications and closing them straight away. But having to reload after five minutes means I cannot really take advantage of that eight gigabytes of RAM that this particular model has. And overall, I think they need to just tone down on how aggressive the battery management is, the task manager closing things down. Okay, so battery life, this one is really, really impressive. For 120 hertz, this result surprised me so much so that I checked my calibration of the screen. I ended up repeating the test and I got something very similar. This is the second time around. So 11 hours and 37 minutes with a fixed battery life test is great. So real world use, you're looking at about eight or nine hours or so, maximum of screen on time if you keep a low brightness at 120 hertz. This to me is an amazing result, okay? Not even phones at 60 hertz can get this. I don't know what magic Xiaomi's done, but that's where I think they are tweaking the frame rate and lowering it down a little bit to help boost this battery performance. Let's compare this to my two other 120 hertz screen phones. So we have on the left, that's the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, and that gets just over nine hours. Same exact test, same exact brightness, same exact conditions, same exact wireless network it was connected up to, and I did have data enabled, but not data enabled, but SIM cards in all of them at the time of the test. And this one gets close to nine hours, the Mi 10 Ultra. That's why I say this battery life with the Dimensity 1000 Plus is absolutely fantastic there. Really, really good result. And why I say it's so impressive, it is bettering flagship phones with the signal strength is absolutely amazing in the speeds I'm getting with it. Look at this. So the Mi 10 Ultra, it got a rather low 127 megabits per second wireless transfer speeds. And it even bedded out the super expensive Samsung here, which got 300, which is very good from that point, from that signal range. So if you have a poor signal strength network near you, you're going to find the wireless on this particular phone here, the K30 Ultra, absolutely amazing. Now the Antutu score here for the Dimensity 1000 Plus, this is an excellent score getting close up near to 5000 with Antutu version 8.4. The big increase here is the GPU performance, which is excellent. It's not far off the Adreno 650, which a lot of people are gonna say, hang on, that can't be right. It's not. Look at this. Again, I'm going to bring in another flagship here to show you the difference. So 50,000 points, that's actually, okay, it's not, it's a big margin, but look at this. GPU score beating out the Exynos Galaxy Note 20 Ultra here. This is a 1300 euro phone. What an embarrassment that it is actually getting a better score here just overall because of how good the GPU is in this Dimensity 1000 Plus here. And with the Camera 2 API support, we do have a level three here, but remember this is a MediaTek phone. Now with the Redmi Note 8 Pro, we did actually get a Gcam port, but it's quite rare, it's more difficult, so don't expect to have a great Gcam port for this particular phone. It may eventually come, but I wouldn't hold my breath for that. And we do have a Widevine level one cert. Now, if you look at in Google Play, you cannot find Netflix there. Unfortunately, it's not showing up. It just shows up some other rubbish. But you have to go onto a website, download the APK and install it or sideload it. And then you can have Netflix. And Amazon Prime Video is also working fine. And lastly, our internal storage speed. So this has a UFS, I believe 2.1 storage in here. Correct me if I'm wrong, please, in the comments. You guys always do anyway. Uh, and it has actually got very, very good scores. When you look at what matters, the random reads and writes, this has the highest ever score I have seen for random write speeds. Again, even bettering flagships costing twice or three times or four times in this. Take a look at the random reads here on the Mi 10 Ultra and the random write speed, okay? I'll just line those up there correctly. You can see there's a big, big difference. And then I'll bring in the Exynos Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. Why not? Look at the difference here with those speeds. So yes, the sequential writes and reads are 
lower, but come on, we're talking about a phone that's under 300 US dollars in China. Impressive, absolutely impressive storage speeds and overall just spec of this phone. So Xiaomi had to sacrifice the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack for the secondary loudspeaker that's now in its place here on the K30 Ultra up the top. It adds a little bit more immersion, especially when gaming to this phone, which is really good. The volume is up ever so slightly, it's slightly richer, giving us slightly more adding that second speaker. Overall, was it a worthy trade-off? Now, I don't use my loudspeaker enough. I would actually prefer to have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack because I don't go walking down the street blasting out my music like some people do with their phones. But anyway, we've got the K30 Pro right here, slash Poco F2 Pro, K30 Ultra, and I've just thrown in here the Mi 10 Ultra as well just to show you so you can hear actually what it sounds like. Now, all of the speakers are set to 100%, all the same track. Let us know in the comments to your ears which one actually sounds better here. Our gaming performance on this particular phone here, the K30 Ultra, is just like a flagship. Now, I tested out Call of Duty. What you're looking at is settings that limit the frame rate. It's only on high as the maximum setting. It played very well on this really high visuals as well. But the problem is, with the frame rate limited, I couldn't really push the performance of this particular game. But other titles like Real Racing 3 with an uncapped frame limit did run at 120 frames per second, was super smooth and very nice as a result. Also tested out Shadow Gun Legends on the ultra high settings, very demanding. This one again locked to 60 frames per second. Unfortunately, a lot of games out there just don't support this chip yet because it's too new. I did play the game for one hour and we'll have a look at what temperatures it did get up to. All right, so I've just been gaming for an hour and yes, it is getting warm. You can see temperatures of close to about 38 degrees on the screen. Ambient temperatures here are currently about 24, 25 degrees. And this is kind of normal temperatures after one hour gaming. This is like any Snapdragon, but let's have a look at the rear of it as well because it will probably actually be a little hotter there. So you can see that there's a bit of a hot patch here around the frame. Uh, that's about 38 degrees. So really these thermals are acceptable. They're perfectly fine. I take for example, after one hour of gaming, the Mi 10 Ultra will actually be around about 41, 42, sometimes 43 degrees. So this is actually fine. It's not super hot, at least with my ambient 25 or so degrees. So a quick look at our camera here. This is the pro mode. You can use this for both the camera and video as well. You've got a lot of settings in here. So white balance, shutter rate, focus, ISO, the lens, no raw mode, however, with this particular mobile phone. Video mode up to 4K 30. And we have a photo mode right here. So selecting and tapping here is the ultra wide. This is the main and two times digital zoom. And one thing to point out too, sorry, with the video that when you're recording, you cannot just swap over to the lens. Xiaomi does not allow us to do that on any of their mobile phones. We have a portrait mode. And under more, you will find the 64 megapixel mode, night mode, and various others in here. So let's have a look at some samples now shot on the Redmi K30 Ultra. So this is the front facing footage. It sounds a bit muffled of course because I'm wearing a mask as you can see. So it doesn't have any electronic image stabilization. However, the bit rate for the audio is a nice 320 kilobits per second, but I would like to see some electronic image stabilization with this. It's only the Mi 10 Ultra, which is also my channel videos on that one, that has the electronic image stabilization with the front facing camera. So if you were to jog along or even just walking, it shakes all over the place as you can see. This is a sample of 4K, 30 frames per second, and look at this electronic image stabilization. It's hard to believe that I'm actually just walking normally ahead and holding this handheld. It looks like I must be using a gimbal, I must be cheating, but I'm not. It is amazing, especially for a phone of this price point and category. Panning around, if you do it nice and slow, you shouldn't actually see too much stutter there, which is great. So overall, very good electronic image stabilization. Ultra wide video, same thing, walking ahead. It does look very steady, but it's not quite as sharp and as detailed as the main camera. And that's understandable because the sensor is not as good. Neither is the lens. This is now the ultra steady video mode, which is using the ultra wide camera, 1080p max, 
And I'll run ahead to show you that the stability, it's very good. It's not perfect, it just jolt ahead left and right a little bit, but overall not bad for a super steady mode. Right, so I probably come out of some sort of MediaTek shill, but they haven't paid me anything at all for this video. No one's paying me anything. I bought this phone myself. It's just a fact that they've come out with a very impressive chip. I know there's some Qualcomm fanboys out there defending them like crazy, and there'll be some silly claims thrown around, but once you get this phone and test it out yourself, you will see that it does really offer so much. So that wireless performance cannot be faked. I cannot fake that test. It is faster than the Exynos. That's no surprise there. The Exynos 990 late in 2020 is not a flagship level chip anymore. Not with this mid-range chip performing like a flagship. Look at the GPU scores. Better than that Galaxy Note 20 Ultra at its 1300 euro price tag. Better performance in general. 120 hertz screen on this one is fantastic. It is top tier flagship level, super bright, and screen fingerprint level reader, sorry, works well. We don't have any cutouts in the screen either. Pop-up camera is a, an annoyance to some people, but if you're like me, I don't take selfies, only for my reviews, really. And I don't actually worry about it too much. I don't need it. Yes, it could wear out. Yes, it could break if you drop the phone, but hey, that's just one of the things there. Price point, nothing else can match this and beat it now. For the performance, for the price, absolutely fantastic. I mean, this in China will retail the base model with six gigabytes of RAM for only about 230 or 40 US dollars. This spec that I have with the eight gigabytes of RAM is approximately 280 US dollars. And it's offering a flagship level that's never been seen before. It, it really has not. 64 megapixel camera does take a very good shot. Great electronic image stabilization. Audio and video is good. I mean, it's not the best. There are so many areas of this phone that is really, really good. It charges, fully charges in under one hour. That is fine, it's perfectly acceptable. Battery life for 120 hertz is absolutely astounding. It's amazing, it's the new champion for me for battery life, especially 120 hertz. However, there's something going on there, okay? I'm digging into this still, but I think they're using some sort of variable frame rate here, Xiaomi. The UI is not a constant 120 hertz to my eyes, and maybe they're doing some sort of trickery with the refresh rate, lowering it down sometimes in times where they feel they could optimize it. So I think it's maybe an adaptive kind of refresh rate or frame rate. That's the only reason that I can explain why it's getting such good battery life at 120 hertz. It also explains why I'm sometimes seeing these animation problems or hiccups, a little bit of stutter, that it doesn't actually run at 120 hertz the whole time the UI. Clearly not to me, especially when you wake the phone, you're in an app, you swipe up and go home, I see it now and I go, oh, and I cringe actually from using those other 120 hertz screen phones, 
they are always constantly smooth, fast, and fluid, and getting terrible on-screen time of about five to six hours. This one's probably about seven hours, depending on your use, of course, so much better. And that is why I think I've got my suspicion that there's something going on there with the frame rate. That's the, the biggest complaint from me, which is not actually a big complaint at all. Now, you, there's a couple of things you must be aware of. There's no LTE band 20, 28, some of those frequencies for Sprint, Verizon, they're not gonna be there. This is a Chinese phone, remember, okay? Google Play Store is not part of the ROM, but it kind of is. Google Framework is part of this, so you just need to get the Google Play Store APK installed, give it permissions, auto start, set it up, and you're away. You install all the apps you want like any other phone, and it works just fine there. So it does have NFC. We lost the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, sadly, and it charges in under one hour. Now overall, this is an absolute fantastic package. Xiaomi's really done it. All we need now is what you're all probably saying in the comments. Global release, Xiaomi, we need to petition them almost. Where is it? If they sold this model globally with a similar kind of price point in Europe, this would just sell like hotcakes. It would be an absolute sellout for them. They really need to do that. And I'm sure they're making plans for that, hopefully. So thank you so much for watching this review. It's a really thumbs up phone that I would say don't hesitate to go and buy it if you don't need LTE Band 20.